All right, we can swim around, but at the moment it's a very empty place. There is no life in this world. So what we are going to do in this lesson is bring in some uh, fish and make them so that they have a simple behavior that kind of feels like they are real fish. I'm not saying that fi real fish are that simple, but um, it will really feel like they are fish once you try it on your head mounted display. Okay, so let's start by going, I'm going to go to Blender and export the models that we will be using. If you if you're not familiar with Blender, that, that is fine, and this part is not really to follow, follow along, it's just to show how I export the, the models from Blender. But you can, always, um, you can always skip a little bit further if you don't want to see this, this particular part. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do here is um, grab my fish model and go to File, Export, FBX, and then I always make sure to have selected objects checked and also this button needs to be active. And then I need to find the folder where this uh, project is located, which is uh, somewhere here in my hard drive. And inside of assets, I'm going to go and create a new model, a new folder called models. And I'm going to access that. And this will be fish. Let's call this fish one. So I'm going to export my fish number one. And I've got a few more things here. I've got a fish, fish number two. Um, but I think I had somewhere like an optimized version of that fish number two. Um, oh no, this is actually the optimized one. So by the way, I had models with more detail, but just to reduce the amount of geometry, in this case, I've opted to simplify them a little bit, which uh, you can do using a using a tool that is called the the, mo the decimate modifier. So I'm going to apply that decimation to, to, to uh, get that to be saved. And now I'm going to save my file. I'm going to make sure this is selected and export it like I exported the other fish, the previous fish. So this would be fish number two. And I think I have to export fish number one again because I'm not sure if the, 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 the filter was applied. So I'm gonna apply that and just export fish number one again. So if you are familiar with Blender, this is just how I am exporting my models. If you are new to Blender, it's a really good tool. It's free. So I'm just in, in, maybe in the future you will want to know how I exported the fish and you can always come back to this part. So there are three more things we need to export here. We have the, 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 the ships that they will be sunk in the ocean. They will be part of the environment. So I'm going to select the ship and go to export. FBX again and click uh, ship here so we can have a little ship grave graveyard and Then we have our shark which has the body and then there is the jaw I've had them as, as different models because we'll have an animation where they uh, the, They kind of move together. So this is the shark body. I'm going to go to file export FBX and just save this as shark body and then I'm going to do the same with um, with the uh, jaw and uh, select the, the jaw and go to file, export, FBX and save this as shark jaw. So that is all of our model importing and all of our blender here. Now back in Unity, we can go to models and we can bring in the, the ships, for example, so we can have uh, a ship that is uh, like kind of half buried somewhere. Um, so we can have like maybe a couple of those. I'll position one somewhere else so that when we are swimming, it's like we uh, we get that feeling of discovery, like we run into a, a sunk vessel and it's just going to make the scene a little bit more interesting. So let's, uh, let's bury that a little bit like so. Okay and maybe move this one a little bit further. All right, so now uh, back to the, the the fish. I'm going to, um, let's, let's get a bit closer to the, the camera here and look at where, at the, at the fast drum of the camera. So we're looking at this direction by default. So I'm gonna bring one of the fish and position it somewhere that we can see, where we can see it. Uh, so the fish, as you can see, is quite big in size. It's very big in size. If we go and press play, 
um, we can see it there. Or it's actually not that big. It is, I guess it's a, it's a good size. And in fact, the vessels themselves are very small. So those are something that those we should definitely make bigger here. So it seems like the fish is fine. Um, so I'm going to leave that one there and I want to have it somewhere where I can see. Okay. Now the fee, the the ship I'm going to increase its size to uh, scale by three, so that we can have a much bigger element um, somewhere somewhere buried somewhere there. And same with this one, uh, we can also scale it to three, and maybe move it a little bit further from the camera, like so. All right. Now the fish. Let's go and. Um, select our fish and the fish by default has a default rotation here and that is because Blender uses a different coordinate system and it uses a different coordinate for the up direction in Blender. The up direction is the Y, is the Z coordinate whereas in Unity it's the Y coordinate. So normally when I'm working with uh, models and I need to give them a behavior I like it that I like that they are facing the real forward direction not the uh, and in this case, uh, and I also don't want to have this like default rotation values. So I'm going to create an, um, an empty object here and give that, um, uh, that empty object. Let's, let's see the, it's located in the same position as the, at the fish. So I'm going to bring the fish inside of that empty object. And now we will be working with the empty object directly. So the empty object doesn't have any default rotations, so it's going to be easy for us to work with. Okay, let's rename the empty object to fish. And we will be making a prefab out of this object. So in assets, I'm going to create a new folder here and call that folder prefabs and drag the fish. Let's re rename this to fish1 and the inner one to fish one model and I'm going to bring this uh, this fish one here into model into a uh, prefabs okay all right so now the behavior of the script of the fish let's go to scripts and create a new script called fish controller so how is our fish going to behave well our fish will have a a speed at which it's moving so it's moving on its forward direction towards its forward direction so it will have the a normal uh, um, it will have a, sp a speed and that will be a public a public variable it will be a float and it will be called speed then um, how is our fish going to behave our fish will be moving at a certain speed and if it runs into anything like a wall or some other collider it will go back where it came from it will basically switch directions and go back since i'm talking about collision here it means that our fish should have a um, collider so i'm going to add the collider to the parent object here i'm going to go to add and give this a let's let's give this a uh, box collider so i'm going to give it a box collider now I have to adjust the box collider so that it it occupies all of the space here. So I'm going to um, oops I'm going to extend this to both directions so that we can have the box collider for our fish. Now when you are moving a collider, it's best to add a uh, a rigid body, a kinematic rigid body that is according to the Unity official documentation. So I'm going to disable gravity and enable kinematic. So the fish is not going to be subject to external forces. We are still going to be we're going to be modifying its transform directly. We want to make the fish move at a certain speed, a certain velocity, and the direction of that uh, will be the forward of the of the fish. So I'm going to be using update for that and actually fixed update since we are dealing with rigid body here. We are not really accessing the rigid body directly. I've set the rigid body as kinematic so that we can just work with the transform of the fish. So in here, I'm going to calculate the, the distance. Uh, as we know, the velocity is equal to distance divided by time. And therefore, 
the distance is equal to velocity times time. So the let's call this uh, the vector three uh, movement. How much we are we're moving is going to be the time that has passed between these uh, these calls, which is time dot fixed delta time times the the velocity. So it's a that is a whoops. That is a, a vector. The velocity will be a vector that we actually haven't defined yet. So let's go and define our velocity. This will be our velocity. Vector 3 velocity. And the difference between speed and velocity is that speed is just a number. Velocity has a vector component to it, a direction. So the velocity, the fish moves to the... The fish actually always moves to the to its forward direction. So instead of uh, having velocity here, we, I guess we can calculate it just, just in this part. Mm, well, it's, we don't want to be calculating that on each on each fixed update call. So let's calculate that at the beginning, okay? So the velocity will be the forward direction times the speed. This is the velocity vector. Oops. And and then we uh, we can calculate our movement in this in this manner and we can add that to our position basically make it move this is transform.position plus equal movement we are adding that that vector to it on each on each um, fixed update call i think this should be enough to make the fish move so i'm going to go to unity select the fish enter a value make sure, make sure there's a value here like two for example and I'm going to press play and we are seeing our fish move and as you will see the fish will eventually reach a, a wall and it will go through the wall so that is not what we what we want we don't care if the fish if the fish uh, runs into another fish but but if it reach a, a wall it should uh, bounce back so we need a method to reverse the direction of the fish and since we're not going to be the fish is not going to be blocking elements i've uh, gone and selected here is trigger on its box collider so we are going to listen for the trigger event and if we are triggering if you're running into another object we're going to reverse direction now if we run into other fish like i said we don't want this to happen so we need a way to distinguish fish from the rest uh, a really easy way for do, to do that is just to add another tag and use that tag in our fish prefab. So in here, I'm going to go to add tag and add a new tag, which is going to be called fish and save that. And now go to my fish and give it this, this uh, fish tag. And also with the change that I made, that I made it is trigger. I'm going to apply all of this to the prefab. All right. So now in our code, we are going to listen for uh, on trigger event going to delete this and what we want first is to we uh, we want to reverse direction if we run into something but before we reverse direction we actually want to check uh, only only if it's not a fish or if we run into something that is not a fish or only if it's not a fish not a fish so we don't want this to be a fish so we can compare the tags in this manner and whoops and if this is um, if this is true it means that we ran into something that was not a fish and therefore we can reverse direction reverse direction how do we reverse direction that is something that would be quite simple we can uh, we can switch the transform forward to the other side so we could say that the transfer forward is equal to the transform forward times uh, minus one, which, as you know, is the same as um, just simplifying this statement here, like so. So we are changing the direction. And since we are changing the direction, we should also change the velocity because we set the velocity at the beginning and we are not recalculating it all the time. So we will manually set the velocity again to um, again, as, as minus one, like in the same manner. And now our fish should bounce from one uh, way to the other. 
we could also put this in a different method like um, reverse direction call so I want to do that actually uh, reverse I'm just gonna call it reverse and and then I'm going to move this uh, move this here and and called reverse in this part here in case we want to make our fish reverse direction in some other in a, in a different place okay so let's go to unity and try this out I'm going to uh, grab the fish and position it somewhere where it can bounce maybe uh, if we go on the on the top view maybe somewhere there like in a corner and um, I think this this should give us the what we what we want and we are also going to rotate it so that it uh, it is in an area where it will bounce on both sides so let's go and press play and see what the fish does so it is moving on this direction and then when it runs to something it uh, reverts and then it should do the same um, once it reaches the other side and um, there we go so we've got it working um, now we did bring two types of fish so I'm gonna I'm going to to create a second type of, of fish here um, and uh, and and for that I'm going to duplicate this this prefab and and use that other that other prefab with the with the other model that we had so I'm going to bring this fish here and and expand that and bring the the second fish place that inside and delete the first fish um, let's uh, click continue I think I will have to save this again as a prefab um, so the collider uh, needs to be adjusted a little bit so let's uh, make this a bit bigger here and a bit a little bit taller a little bit taller like so and now I'm going to drag this onto my prefabs folder so the prefab here and delete this one and I think now we should be able to create both types of fish and they both have the, the fish controller uh, given to them now something else here you can currently uh, leave the, the fish and anything even the player can easily leave the scene so uh, what we need to do is add some uh, some borders here and there are different ways of doing that what I'm gonna do here is uh, create planes that don't have any rendering so that they just have a, coll a collider so I'm gonna go here and create an empty object let's first place them all into an empty object this will be called uh, boundaries and in here I'm going to add a new 3d object a new plane and this will be the one that goes up see that let's say that this is the maximum height that we should be able to swim to um, so we can now scale this plane I think by I'm not sure what number we'll need to scale this for 10 seems to to do the job Se seems to be the right size um, so we can scale it to 10 in this manner and remove the mesh render so that there is no rendering it is just a collider and I'm going to duplicate this plane and rotate this plane about uh, x by by 90 and drag this on to the to the side I can set whatever, whatever I want the player to or the fish to be able to move until and I can just uh, adjust it a bit and now uh, what I'm going to do is um, duplicate I think this was already in the right place there I'm going to duplicate this and bring it to this part here and now duplicate it again and rotate it about y in 90 degrees it doesn't need to be rotated on x oh yep it needs to be rotated on x and on y as well and I place it there and now duplicate this as well and place it here so now we have all of the sites um, cover I think yes we do so now nothing should be able to escape this this level